hello i have um set up a a live for you today on tiktok as well as um doing one earlier on um instagram so we were talking about raw dog food and is raw dog food safe <clears throat> so we had a phone call this week uh from a lady who was quite concerned to see um to find out whether or not raw food is um is safe and it, and it is safe but she was concerned because her vet had told her that she shouldn't feed raw diet because it's not safe now they didn't really um they didn't really give any information as to why the vet said it was not okay um but we have got some uh, topics to go over about feeding um raw to hopefully um reassure you that raw diet is is a good safe diet to feed so um i'll show you a few products that we've got we've got um we've got a uh, little pet friend here that can help me out with some demos as well so basically we're just going to go through raw food is it a safe diet for your dog and how to go about feeding it safely so um, if you've ever considered uh, feeding your dog a raw diet but you've got concerns about safety then this is the video for you uh, we are whether or not you've just started out or whether you've been warned by a raw diet by a veterinary professional I just want to reassure you how we do things at Nurturing by Nature to make sure that you know that you are getting everything from us that you need so we're based down in Dorset in the UK and uh, we make raw pet food um, basically this lady called up um, this week and she said I'm really concerned because my vet has said I mustn't feed a raw diet it's really not safe for my dog I need to stop straight away um, and we can only assume it might be down to the fact that there's bacteria potential a lot of people say that like, raw food's full of salmonella but we test all of that so we don't get that problem but a lot of people would maybe say why why is it unsafe for my pet so we've done a bit of a lowdown so we're going to go over um, safety measures that we go through to make sure that your food and our processes are completely safe for you and for your pet um, bones are bones safe to feed your dog because a lot of people get worried about feeding bones um, hygiene at home so there's another way of keeping you yourself and your pet nice and safe is by practicing good hygiene at home um, feeding them a safe variety of foods starting your dog on a raw diet safely um, uh, where where do you get raw dog food that's safe from what does that mean um, and consulting the right people so making sure you're going to the right people to get the raw information that you need so basically we're going over raw dog food and the safety when feeding a raw diet so we make the food ourselves we have to have a license to be able to do so that's something that we do in the UK I know different countries do different things but in the UK we have to have a license to be able to produce a raw diet for your pet and um, this customer rang her vet said you mustn't feed it it's bad so our product um, is we take it very seriously obviously you know it's our livelihood making a raw diet for your pets um, we use reputable suppliers so we've got good long-standing relationships with good suppliers that we know fit to excellent um, safety uh, food safety and they have to produce food for a lot of um, the chains that we use in the UK supermarkets as well so we know that they're we're sort of piggybacking on on the rules that they set up so we know that the food should be produced carefully it's all UK um, based meat anyway um, and the food arrives with us in a temperature controlled vehicle so when it leaves the producer comes down to us it's in class as category three so it doesn't mean that it is bad or a, a rubbish product it just basically means category three means that the food has been taken out of the human food chain deemed as category three so then it is only for animal food so that's what the category three part stands and people get worried about that but that is okay that's what we work with category three means that it's now no longer for human food consumption it is pet food only um, so the food arrives in a temperature controlled vehicle and we keep a log of all the temperatures that come in of the food and of the, of the vehicles that it's travelled in. So that is logged. We use a temperature probe in the food like this one here and that will log the temperature of the food and we always check. So if it's consignment which has got multiple products in, we will visually check and we will temperature check all of those products before we accept it and allow it into our 
um, processing unit, which is where I'm based today. Um, so that's our intake process. We use the temperature probe. Um, we use the invoice details uh, or, the, or the delivery note to create a batch code for every product that we make. So each product that comes in gets its own unique batch code and we use that code to be able to um, supply APHA, which is DEFRA, a full um, traceability of that product. So if they were to come in, go through our freezers, pick up a product, say like the chicken drumsticks I've got here, they would have a look at this and they would go, right, show me the process that you've gone through to make sure that we can trace that back. And we will show them the invoices, we'll show them the information on the intake sheet. Um, and that's all relevant for the batch reference. So that's how we trace everything. Um, so everything has a visual check, everything is traceable that we do. And we do temperature check throughout the, um, the, the process as well. Now it's really important that you know that our teams in the workroom also, hi Adeline, um, the teams in the workroom also wear the protective um, personal equipment. So they wear gloves, they wear hairnets, they also um, wear beard snoods should they have a beard, and they also have white coats and they wear the wellies as well. So they are protected and so is your food. Um, and then what we do is um, we process the food in a temperature controlled environment and obviously we store it in temperature controlled environment as well. So our freezers, if we, fridges if we need to use them for tempering are at the correct temperature. Our freezers are also really, really low. So our, our freezer temperature is, is a minimum of minus 18 degrees. That would That is the standard requirement for what we do. They have to be minus 18 degrees. Um, but ours are generally a little bit more and the workroom is um, set to run at 11 degrees so the the temperature in the workroom is a safe working environment for people but it also helps with the food and keeps it cool and throughout the whole process say if we're mincing a product we would be temperature checking it with the probe and we record that too so you know we go through loads of loads of things to make sure that your pet food is lovely and safe for your pets and then it's frozen as soon as possible and we keep it in the freezer we don't transport it in vehicles that are not um, temperature controlled or if we do it goes into a box where it's kept nice and cold so there's no risk to the product at all and then obviously we use um, a delivery process um, with a courier company which is usually a 24 hour courier, sometimes Highlands a little bit further away, say up in Scotland, it might be a two day service, but generally in the UK it's under 24 hours. So it might leave us around about three o'clock in the afternoon, it might be with you by nine o'clock the next morning. So you know how quick that we get around the country so we can do that in that time. And everything leaves us in polystyrene. So we use polystyrene boxes because they work. Um, we test them, we use them, um, all the time we recycle them as well but we we use polystyrene because it's in a very effective way of keeping the food cold and the main thing is that we need to make sure it is nice and cold when it stays comes back to you so we what we don't want is it arriving and it's defrosted and if it ever does do that you need to let us know because we will then look at it and make sure the pet make sure that the couriers treated it with the um, correct information and got it to you in the right time and we can double check. But the the boxes that we use, this is the polystyrene box here, um, this is the molly box, they're nice and thick and they really do work which is why we continue to use them. Um, we've got a blog on our website at Nurturing by Nature explaining about polystyrene, how it's actually not as bad as a lot of people think, oh polystyrene is terrible but um, it's actually quite recyclable and reusable. Um, so, you know, rest assured that that's the process that we go through. So I've covered what we do in the workroom, what we cover on intake, make sure we trace all your food properly so that you know. Um, and the one thing I did say a little bit earlier was that we send everything away for testing. So um, all the products that we make, we keep a representative sample. And also when we're making a mince, we take a sample throughout the process of mincing that product. So we take five samples throughout the process of that product to send away to a lab so that we make sure that there's no bacteria that's found in that product. So they'll be testing for salmonella, testing for entobacteriaceae. So that goes away and we get the results back for that and there's never really a problem. Um, and toe levels sometimes are a bit higher, but generally don't forget your dogs have got um, really strong stomach acid to be able to break down those and kill off that bacteria anyway. So really raw feeding in that sense is really safe. So um, what other things should we be thinking about? So this lady's vet said you shouldn't feed raw, it's really dangerous. So um, 
our process, I've been through that for you. Um, feeding appropriate sized meals, um, introducing a raw diet gradually, that's something to think about. If you um, feed raw, you um, must never feed cooked bones, it should only be raw bones. Um, but the other thing, a good thing to do for safety at home is when you feed your dog, kit, stay with them. Don't leave them with a treat or a big bone or something. You know, if you're around, they can have it. But I wouldn't necessarily think it's very safe to leave your pet gnawing on a bone if you were to go out, because you never know what would happen. You could just come back and your dog hasn't had a very, you know, had an accident with that thing. So, um, you know, there's loads of risks out there. So you have to weigh it up and, and sort, sort it out to make sure it's suitable for you. Um, what else we've got? We've got um, suitable supplies. So, let me go on to the next section here, which is about bones, because a lot of people worry um, whether or not you should give your dog a bone, and you can. You can actually feed bones to your dog. Um, a dog that's um, well used to eating a raw diet can um, digest a bone nice and easily. They break it down in the stomach. The stomach acid is so strong until it turns the bone to a jelly, and they can absorb the goodness from that. So. The main thing is you should never ever feed cooked bones because cooked bones are different. They end up being brittle um, and the dog can't digest them, they're undigestible. So then they end up potentially causing problems as they pass through, they snap, they're very brittle. Um, you don't want your dog to be eating that. So never ever feed cooked bones um, and, and do avoid those um, treat bones that are cooked as well. Um, they're cooked at the end of the day, so try and avoid those if you can. Um, you quite often see them in pet shops, just conventional pet shops, and they're quite smelly as well. You know, they smell quite pongy. Really, a raw bone shouldn't be, but shouldn't really be smelly. Um, I'd be worried if it was smelly. It means that there's bacteria on there and it's grown. So avoid cooked bones and avoid anything too smelly. Um, feed bones that are appropriate size for your dog. So I'm going to bring in. Uh, Bruce, here's Bruce, okay, he is a miniature, <laughs> he's a very small um, golden retriever, um, but Bruce, Bruce is going to demo on the size of the um, bones that you should be feeding a dog of this size, so this is Bruce, okay, um, we're going to feed bones that are no, not, not easy to swallow, so I've got some demo bones here, so a really, really good example for a dog of this size, would be a lamb rib so that's the same sort of size of his head you know that he can't break that straight into his mouth and swallow it straight away so it's just something to encourage your viewers to share your live and invite more friends so please do that if you feel feel the case thank you um so this is a a raw um lamb rib this is one of ours from our factory that we make loads of people love these they've got lots of meat on them fat um and this bone here is a very appropriate size meal for this dog, okay? Because he can't swallow that in one go. Let me compare that to one of these marrow bones. These are our small marrow bones, which would be suitable for maybe like a chihuahua. Bruce can get that right in and he can swallow it straight away. And that's a very hard bone. You want them to be chewing that, eat the meat off, eat the marrow, but you don't really want them to eat the whole bone. So, you know, that would get stuck potentially. It might not, but it might do, so that's a risk. So we avoid that risk by not giving him a bone that's too small. So that's why we feed a bone that's bigger then they have to chew it, break it down, and then they bite it into appropriate size pieces for them to swallow. If it doesn't fit, they might bring it back up and chew it again, and then swallow it again. That quite often happens. So I would feed bigger bones to my Bruce here. I'd probably avoid things like chicken necks because he could just swallow them down whole. Um, but bigger bones like the lamb rib that we've got here or maybe a lamb neck or even like a recreational type bone like one of these beef marrow beef bones on the end bones that would be fine for Bruce because he can eat all the meat off of there eat the marrow out of it and then he'll be well away because he's had a lovely meal and um, you throw the rest of the bone away so that's the type of bone that you need to feed something that's appropriate for the size of your dog and then a really good way of seeing that is by going by the size of their head to make sure that you know that they can't swallow that bone straight away. So you want them to chew the bones, you don't want to just gulp them straight down. Um, so there's always a risk when you feed bones. Doesn't, you know, there's no way of putting it really. You are feeding your dog a bone, uh, feeding with anything, there's gonna be a risk they could choke on it. So you don't want to feed anything that's that's been cooked and you want to feed appropriate sized bones for your dog. Um, okay, so that's the bone, the bone debacle. Um, just make sure um, you 
feed appropriate size bones for your dog. Hygiene at home is the next session that we've got on. Um, so we recommend that you store your raw food in the freezer until it's time to take it out and defrost it. And then when you do defrost it, you defrost it in a fridge um, on the lower shelf of the fridge and you defrost it in a nice leak proof container such as something like this. You can get a clip lock the container from the supermarket or from us and you put your food in there. This is just a demo mint. So we've got, um, you put your, take your food out of the packet, you put the, the food in here. It's not a frozen piece, that's a, a fake piece. This is one of the frozen ones here. You take it out of its packet and then you put it in here to defrost in the fridge on the bottom shelf of the fridge because you don't, you know, that shouldn't leak, but you don't want it to leak on any of your food. So you need to keep it away from your food potentially um, so you don't end up ingesting it. And then that goes in the bottom of the fridge where it can defrost nice and safely. Um, and have a look and see what temperature your fridge is at because it might be surprised it might be a bit higher than it should be. So if this is defrosted in around about five degrees, that should take about 24 hours to defrost a 500 gram block like that. Um, so don't forget you're handling raw meat. So some of you might prefer to wear gloves. You could wear gloves like this. You could wear marigolds and then you wash them again. Um, you can also make sure that you um, you clean or you could have like a separate utensils and a separate chopping board that are just for your dog's food. A lot of people do that just for their dogs, just for the dog's food. So you don't end up using that with your food as well. Like I say, we do bacteria test everything. So we know it's nice and safe, but these are extra measures that you can do at home to make sure that hygiene at home is, is adequate for your household. Um, so gloves are up to you. You could use marigolds and rewash them if you wanted to. Something like this is not so environmentally friendly. I don't wear gloves. I just wash my hands with hot water and soap. Uh, that will get the bacteria off as well if you follow a good process of hand washing. Um, food bowls, wash them up. So you could use a dishwasher um, or you could wash them up in hot soapy water. Um, and then keep the raw food separate in the fridge from your food and keep it on the lower shelf so that nothing is going to get into your food from that. Um, wipes, you could use those as well. So there are pet specific wipes that you can get, um, <clears throat> like the Beko ones. You could use that after your dog's eaten. Um, wipe their face with this. Don't forget dogs do lick their bum. So really you shouldn't, you know, ideally, you know, I know some people let their dogs lick their faces, but make sure you clean everything properly afterwards anyway. So you could use something like this on your, your dog's whiskers um, and that would help to clean their face off if they're a particularly messy eater. Um, and also don't let babies, uh, dogs lick babies' faces. That's always a risk and you see it sometimes, but if you can avoid that, that's probably a good thing. Um, so. The next part would be um, variety. Um, so making sure that you feed a safe raw diet would also by in, by including a variety of meats in your dog's diet. If you're just feeding one protein, your dog won't be getting everything that they need. So you need to feed a variety over time. It doesn't have to be all the time. It just needs to be in the time. So feed a variety over six to eight weeks. If you can fit in five proteins a week, that's great. So you might be lamb, chicken, turkey, um, beef and some fish. Um, you might have different, a couple of different sources of fish. That would be perfect because you're feeding a variety over time. Nurturing by nature, we don't make a complete diet, um, but we, off, we, we offer a variety of different meats. So we've got things like the fish chunks, like this here that you can include in the food. These are a kilo of fish. Um, we've got the minces, you've got the bones. So feeding a variety over time is a good way of feeding a nice, safe variety of food to make sure that your pet gets everything they need. Um, starting your pet on a safe diet, safe raw diet. So um, starting them off safely, rather than just chucking them a great big bone, at Nurturing by Nature, we tend to start people off slowly on the minces. Um, generally, that is just to avoid your pet getting an upset tummy. They don't often get that, to be honest, but sometimes they do because you might have a particularly sensitive breed um, or a particularly sensitive dog. 
quite often people come over to a raw diet because their dog's tummies are dodgy anyway and the raw food really helps them and firms up their poos and makes them better so you will definitely notice a difference in what they produce out the other end when they're on a raw diet um, really good um, way of, of reminding yourself what your pet has had when you start off on a raw diet is to keep a diary so just keep a quick diary of what they've had each day and then we would introduce it slowly by introducing the minces first and taking away some of their their other other food that they were having and then introducing more mince more raw food over time and you could do that over one week two weeks three weeks whatever suits you best at home um and that's how we would introduce it slowly um keep a diary so we would transition old old food to their new raw diet over a week or so and you can get help so companies like us at nurturing by nature there's plenty of us all over the country and all over the world really you can contact them go in and see them get your dog weighed so you know how much to feed and then you can start off on minces um there's there's so there is there's so much out there if you look for it some people start off on chicken wings it probably ultimately doesn't doesn't make a problem for the dog you're feeding bone straight away so that's why we do the mince with the bone in to make sure it's easier for your dog to digest just in case the chicken wing puts them off but the bones are good so if you can feed bones in time then you add them in after maybe three or four weeks you start off on a softer bone so that your dog gets used to it and they don't hurt themselves and they eat something like a chicken carcass and they eat those eat that at the first rate and then that that means that they can um eat that nice and slowly and then you will then have um, a dog that's happy and healthy and eating bones nicely. That will help to clean their teeth. Um, but some people can't stand the idea of their dog having bones. So we've got bone in our minces. We've got alternative treats that you can help to clean their teeth as well. So there's lots of things that you can do to adapt for your own personal needs. It's all about you and your pet and how you live together and how it works for you. So you don't have to do it how everyone else thinks that you should do it. You should really do it how it works for you and for your pet. Um, where do I find a safe, safe raw diet? So we're here in the UK, we are licensed, um, we have to, um, in order to be able to produce a raw diet, to be able to sell it commercially, we have to have a license um, through the APHA, which is the Animal Plant and Health Association. Um, it's, it's, it's a government body, part of DEFRA, um, they would be the people that give you your license and there's loads of things that we have to do to make sure it's nice and safe for you to be able to be able to do that and you won't get your license until that is the case so if you look online have a look at the raw food companies online um, you need to look out for the APHA number so that is the license reference that the raw food company will be given once they've passed everything and once they've made sure that they are um, qualified to be able to make the food and they do everything correctly um, so you know like we're nurturing planet we're, we're in Dorset in the UK so we've got phone you know we've got people on the end of the phone which is almost unheard of now um, we've got an office with people in you can call us we've got shops with people in you can come and see us um, and we'll be happy to help you but otherwise you can look online you could have a look in your local area and see if you've got a raw like a, a pro raw uh, pet shop a lot of pet shops have got a few freezers in but are they really passionate about feeding a raw diet do they really know what they're talking about have a look at the other products that they're selling in their pet shop to see whether or not they align with the values of feeding raw so that is always a good good way of um, finding out if that pet shop is going to be able to give you the information and the help that you need have a look and see what else are they selling? Are they selling just anything under the sun or are they really um, focusing on more holistic, more healthy types of food? Um, so, and also when you're looking in the pet shop, make sure that you can see a license reference on the food that you're feeding. So it should be there and it would end in, um, like us, we've got eight, it says APHA approval number and that's our own number. And then there's, there's various numbers on there um, and it ends in ABP. Uh, slash PTF so that that number you need to find on the food okay make sure it's in date make sure it looks good if you wouldn't feed it you know if you don't if you get it home and you defrost it it doesn't smell good unless it's tripe because that is smelly 
I would avoid feeding it. You want to, you know, there's many genuinely means of bacteria there. So um, we quite often find that dogs don't want to eat the food necessarily because it doesn't smell of anything, um, because it's so fresh and so, so healthy. So some dogs you might have to put something in there to make it smell a bit more like some tripe sticks or a little bit extra to make it smell. But generally, that's what you're looking for when you go into a pet shop. Are they passionate about what they do? Um, you could also, you know, you might find something in a butcher's. It's very unlikely that a butcher has a dual license to be able to produce and um, run category three products next to human food consumption products. So it's very unlikely that they test the meat um, in, in a butcher's, but you can pick up meat in a butcher's. Some people pick up some food in, in, in a supermarket, for example. Um, the minces that come in trays like this um, won't have bone in. Okay, so bear that in mind when you're feeding it. A mince in a tray like this won't have bone in it, but you can pick up things like drumsticks, wings, turkey. Um, so, you know, sometimes in the bargain box. Um, when it's in a when it's in a container like this, generally it's been gas flushed, so it just means it will pinker um, and the meat will look fresher. When it is gas fishing, we use freezing to preserve our products. Um, so yeah, that's it at the supermarket. You could pick some stuff up in there. You could get a deal, couldn't you, potentially? Um, and then consulting the right people. Um, so who who should you consult with when considering a, a shift to a raw diet? Well, you could talk to your vet. Um, potentially they might be pro raw. Quite a lot of veterinary practices, you know, they're coming around to the idea of it now. It's out there, it's happening, they're just gonna have to go with it. Um, we, we will help, so um, Nurturing by Nature will help you on the phones. You can come and see us in our stores. Um, Nettie, my mum who started Nurturing by Nature, there's a huge heritage there. She started it back in 2011. So much knowledge, so much information that's been passed on to our teams. Um, we've got a vet nurse, which is Sue. So it's not, you know, we're not opposed to vets at all. Vets are great, um, we love them. Uh, we wouldn't be without them but sometimes they're not so keen on us um uh yes yeah, so some vets are pro or you could ask your vet what, how they feel about a raw diet potentially if you if you felt like it um um and then yeah raw specialists you might have a raw pet shop in your area you could go into uh they should be able to help you like i say have a look and see what other products that they are championing um have a look online there's loads of information like our website there's a load of information on there um you could find videos on youtube um tiktok seems to have a lot of information here and there um there are uh, nutritionists that are trained in a raw diet um and quite often holistic vets would be up for um a, a more natural way of feeding as well so um I hope this helps. Um, like I say, we've been through the information on how to feed sort of snippets of everything really. Why would this vet not be um, championing a raw diet? Well, it might be one of those things, but I can assure you at Nurture by Nature, we do a lot of things to make sure that your pet food is excellent and is um, as it should be, uh, up to licensed standards. So we, we do everything that we should do correctly. Above board, everything is absolutely perfect so that you can go home and, and your pet can enjoy a nice, safe meal from us. So I, if you've got any questions, um, please add them in now so I can just go over those quickly. Other than that, I shall probably sign off because I'm a bit, well, it's nearly four o'clock. Goodness me. So excellent. Okay, no questions today, so I will leave it for now, but do, you know, I will go back over anyway. Um, so we went over the safety measures that we installed at Nurturing by Nature to make sure your pet food is safe. Um, bones, if you can feed them. Um, hygiene at home, variety, starting a safe raw diet, where to, where to find a safe raw diet, consulting the right professionals. No anti furry federation we we i'm not vet um we have a veterinary nurse that works with us which is sue um and we have veterinary friends i have worked in practice so i worked um for many years in vet practice in reception and in the office but no i'm not a qualified vet so um just got a lot of experience and and over this thing we've been working here since 2011 making the raw diet the best diet that we can 
thank you ever so much for joining me today. Have a fantastic weekend. Oh, it's bank holiday, isn't it? So enjoy the bank holiday, everyone. Take care.